Hi, my name is Heidi Boyd. Welcome to our studio. This is where we make all of our kits. Today I wanted to show you one of our hoop kits and take you through the process of putting it together. It's really very easy. The wonderful thing about these kits is you don't need to spend a lot of time stitching. The applique felt pieces create the design very quickly and all you need to do is add a few little stitches. When we're done, I'll show you how to finish the back of the kit and then you'll be able to hang it on a wall for display right away. So let's get started. Here's one of our kits in a bag. And if you get the kit in the box, the items are still the same. They're just in fancy packaging. Keep the photograph for your reference and you'll see there's a stitch guide on the inside. We'll need that too. And here's all the instructions, the hoop, all the felt, needles and pins, and Here's the pattern pieces, and here is the muslin that we create on. The first step is putting the muslin in the hoop. Unscrew the hoop, and you want to take the inner hoop out. Center your fabric on the inner hoop, and pay close attention to the grain of the fabric so that you can see that the vertical lines up. Then I'm going to stretch it over the hoop and then pull the fabric at the top, then at the bottom, and then each side. You don't want to pull it too much in one direction or you'll change that weave of the fabric. And you want to make sure it's really tight because the tighter it is, the easier it is to stitch. Okay, we've got the fabric in the hoop. That was easy. Let's put this aside and start cutting out our pattern pieces. So the templates are all to size. I'm going to start by cutting so you don't have to enlarge anything and you don't need to add any seam allowances. So I'm going to cut around the body piece first. And you would do this for the entire sheet. And then you would take your felt and you like to go right to the edge of the felt so you save the rest of the felt for the other pieces. In this case we're going to have the little owl um, tops. Oh, and you can use your pins that came in your kit. And what you're doing is just stabilizing the piece on the felt so that it doesn't shift when you cut it. So you would keep doing this, isn't that easy, for each of the pieces. So let's move on to placing the pieces on the hoop. What you want to do is take this reference template out and use it as your guide. So usually on all the kits, you place the bigger pieces first. Here's the branch, here's that piece that we were just cutting out, and the owl tails go underneath. And then we've got three owl chests that sit over the branch, right? And then all of their eye pieces, the pattern pieces are all numbered. So this is owl one, this is owl two, and this is owl three. And see their eye pieces are corresponding owl one, two, and three. And so are their little head pieces. Now if I left these like this, they would all fall off while I'm working. So you need to pin them in place just like you pinned the, a pattern in place to the felt while you were cutting it. So we're ready to start embroidering and when you undo your threads, just gently pull that apart and we're going to start by sewing the feathers on their chest, which is an orange strand. And you only need, each strand of embroidery floss actually has six little tiny strands in it and we only need three for almost all the embroidery. So you have to separate them apart and the trick to that is to keep the bottom part with all the strands down 
and then to coil the rest of them in your fingers. So, okay, save the other half for later. And here's one strand, and you always want to tie a knot at the bottom so the thread doesn't poke through. So you want to refer to your instructions and there's a guide with every color and it tells you what to do with the orange threads. So, and the other thing is, is there's an illustrated guide with all the stitches, but I'm going to take you through what stitches you need to do this kit. And almost all the others, they really don't have any fancy stitches. We're going to start working on his chest and making what I call a V stitch. So it's like a little quarter inch stitch. And I make a second quarter inch stitch that comes down at an angle and connects with it. And I'm gonna do rows of these across his chest. And if you were doing this, you would need, well, look at the finished one. You'd need three and then two and three. I'm gonna show you this next. I'm gonna move over, pretend I've done those and move over to this next one. It's the same V stitch, but it's separated. It's a little bit flatter. The angle isn't as much. So it's one quarter inch stitch. And you can see just by changing the angle and elongating it, it looks a little different, but it's not harder at all. And then on the final, final one, and you don't need to be looking at the finished one, you can always look at your guide here. You can also see that there's straight stitches along the final one. So you just do five final ones. So I'm halfway through these straight stitches, but again, I'm not gonna finish this while you're watching, but I did wanna show you one more thing that happens with the orange stitch. These little ear tassels go on the end. Sort of one long tassel and then make a slightly shorter stitch. So once you finish all your orange, we're ready to switch to white. So the white's really easy. It just makes a fluffy kind of contour around the white felt eye pieces. And the size of the stitch changes a little bit. It's sort of bigger in the center and they get smaller around the edges. And you go around the outside edge of all three eye pieces this way. ahead and switch to the brown thread but you're gonna keep moving and you know it's a good thing to see that you just have to adjust and put them back in place if they slide they're gonna move around until they're sewn in place so you're gonna continue stitching all the way around this bottom edge over the tops of them and then come right back and finish this other side of the first one all right let me put this aside and we'll do the beaks so we have another three strands this time with brown and we're doing that same V stitch we did on the first owl, and I'm making a little tiny beak. So here's the back of my work. You can see where the orange string went between all the different ones. Now when I tie the knot in the back, I actually make a tiny stitch, and I'm being careful that it won't show up on the other side. I haven't gone deep into the fabric. And I make a couple of little tiny stitches in a row. And then on the final one, I pull it until there's a little loop. You see that loop? And then I bring the thread through the loop and pull it tight. And then I trim it. 
You want to do that at the end of each thread so everything doesn't get knotted together in the back. So the next step is working on their eyes. Okay, so now we're working on the eye with the black and we're making a French knot. And make a tiny stitch where the thread came out and you wrap the thread around the needle three times. And then you want to fold those threads in place while you draw the rest of the length up. And you can see how those little twisted threads held in place. And then I make a stitch down. And that's going to hold that twisted thread right in place. And that's a French knot. So let me do it again because it's the trickiest of all the embroidery stitches that we do. I'm making another little stitch right here. I'm going to twist it one, two, three. I'm going to bring the needle up, hold that in place. We got two little eyes. That's great. So um, I'm gonna make the sleeping eye, which is just another one of those V stitches we did for the beak and for the chest. So that's for his eye that is asleep. And then on the other side, he's awake. So we're gonna make another French knot. this to the other side and on. Okay, so now we're going to work on the stars and we've got three strands of yellow and we're working above the big elf's head and we're making a long stitch that's about a half inch long. Okay. Now I'm going to do another half inch stitch across the first one and then to make this a really fancy star, it's going to have two diagonal stitches that intersect the first one. And this makes the big star up at the top and then if you look at the design there's a couple of smaller stars that go around the owls. Now, the last thing we have to do is anchor the branches and the leaves. So when it comes time to put these little leaves on, you make two stitches in each of the leaves to hold them in place. One's longer than the other. So one's a half inch and one's a quarter inch. And on the orange leaves, you want to use brown thread. And then on these sort of stone field um, leaves, you want to use orange thread. So there's my long stitch and there's short stitch and it's just that easy. Here I'm tacking down the edge of the branch. And I'm going to make that little stitch right at the end and I'm going to knot it and I'm going to leave it turned upside down because the next step we're going to do is to finish this hoop so you can display it and you can show everybody what an amazing, talented artist you are. Okay, now, so you can use any floss that you have left over from the kit. Make sure it's a long piece. I'm not tying and not at the bottom. And I'm going to make what's called in sewing a running stitch, which it's just a big stitch. But when I pull the thread through, I'm going to make sure there's a long tail here. I don't want to pull it through too much. I'm going to leave that tail.
bring the ends together and just like trying to start the start of a bow. You make one knot, keep the tension in it. Make another one. Make a measure, trim off the edges, and then just put a little tack or a hanger up on the wall, and you can loop this over the hanger, and you're done. So here's your finished kit ready for hanging. Um, and I wanted to show you our other designs. We have really cool chickadee, a deer, a bear, some gnomes, hedgehogs, and a fox. And I know you had a great time making this, so try another one. Thanks for sewing with me.